Hello everyone, thanks for joining in another interesting episode. I'm your host and I'm Andrew Cloud and likewise before I've been bringing an um, industry expert on this um, YouTube channel to talk and learn from them about the journey into the cybersecurity. So that being said, we have another new host and the idea of this podcast to discuss what goes into the field actually when you are seeking a career or your professional wanted to grow in your career basically what really you go and deploy and um, things change when it comes to cyber security, information security and cloud security. So the idea is that bring more and more experts from the field. So learn from their perspective, what to do and how successfully have they been doing it and learning it. And also if they wanted to share some of the do's and don't do's. So that's being said, I have another awesome industry expert, um, Matt, uh, Matthew Lang. I have, I met him at one of the IC Square local chapter in New Jersey. So that's yeah, the I, I was going to say, I think, I think we first met there, right? When you were, you were, I, I run the manage the mentoring group and you came in and said like, I, I want to help people. And uh, you yeah. know, I think we, we immediately connected. I think we talked for like three hours one day, just kind of like never ending. So, um, and, and that's the beauty of networking. That's, I, there's no, yeah. to, you know, if you're, yeah, if any, if anyone here is listening and doesn't do these networking events or getting to know your peers or even who you want to be your peers, like, get to it. It's a wonderful practice. I think um, Adnan's and I, you know, our, our friendship, as it were, has grown out of those kind of early networking events. So, yeah. And if you're from Jersey in our next meetup event, yeah, do come to us and say hi. And if you're out of Jersey, uh, do check out your local chapter um, for ICS. It's pretty much in every state we have. So, uh, Matt been in the industry for more than two decades. Uh, he is a CSSP certified, a CCFP certified, um, ethical hacker certified. There's a lot of credentials. And when I've been speaking to him, he brings a lot of experience. When you speak to the people, you, you, you kind of understand that. So so that's what I'm going to dig more and explore and ask him more and more questions. Go, uh, dig away. Professional, professionally helping, you know. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I think I think I've so. I've, I've come from the SMB sector, right? So I've small worked inside tech. small, medium businesses pretty much my entire life. Uh, started them, I've sold them, I've, I've, you know, I've done the merger, I've done the acquisition of sides, right? So mm -hmm. I've been, I've been in that mix for a long time. I think I probably have found cybersecurity in the last six years. I come out of a system admin, network admin background found security and kind of said oh you know what this links all of these things together it kind of it it, it code it, it collaborate it, it, everything collaborates around security especially nowadays right i think when i first stepped into it i was like i see that path but nowadays it's a no-brainer right we're seeing the sec requiring that cso's be on boards not requiring but you know, strongly advising that there is there is advisory at that level yep. and you you know i can see why right i think i've seen i've seen the bad side of it where it kind of gets done and then it gets broken um and and i think I've learned all those lessons. So I use security to help technical and business and, and people, right? There's a lot of stress in our industry. Yeah. I, IT folks, when you get hacked, like, oh, man, like there is, yeah. it is, there, you, you, your, your life is flipped upside down. Yeah. Not just for like that night, but for months sometimes, yes. even longer. And so that is, you know, Originally, my degrees in psychology, I did, you know, a small bit of programming and then went from nice. businesses in IT. But but hearkening back to that helping people, right, where you yeah. and I originally connected, it's just we got to get out of this. Um, and so, so I, you know, I like to make sure everything I'm in front of doesn't have those potentials in front of them. So you mentioned a good point, SMB. So let's talk about it. I did not plan, mm -hmm. you know, as, as these recording and session and podcast are live so i did not do any script neither to him and i'm just picking up from your as you mentioned smb and this is in my opinion what i've seen because um, i used to work for smb long ago but in the last 10 years more or less i've changed with a very large enterprises like biggest enterprises right and i've seen both world but smb i still see this a challenge because either they don't see the need and the concern the money i mean what's your thought you, i mean i can go on you and name on. it yeah, they kind of, I, I think, you know, there are clients, I, well, not clients, okay, prospects or industries that I talk to and I kind of go, oh, look, they want me to have a SOC too. How much does that cost? And you're kind of like, 
well, you know, let's talk, right? Like there's this and you need this and where are you? How mature are you? And then when they hear the number of what it, what it reasonably costs, right? They're just kind of like, oh my God, you know, like that's, it, it, that's impossible. I'm like, I, yeah. So th those challenges exist. Absolutely. So you, you end up, you know, but you end up with a lot of like 101 stuff I say, right? So mm -hmm. Make sure your basics are covered, and I think that's where I gravitated toward the CIS controls because that would mm -hmm. be the, fra the framework to know, you know what causes breaches and then deriving from that kind of what controls need to be in place in order to make you know lessen that chance. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say that's the main challenge. Obviously, right. there's the budget, but there's just you know, there are businesses that can take security too far, and there are businesses that you know need that security to go that right. far. I think I think you and I have also talked about CMMC, right? So yeah. that's hitting that's hitting a huge area inside of it's slightly yeah, cyber security. I could argue it's privacy, but it yeah. definitely has the budget concerns. Uh, you know, well, well, well within con the conversation. So we'll, we'll talk about it. So let's let's step back. You mentioned um, some of the framework. So what? If an organization SMB, they do not have dedicated security staff, let's say a small team, most likely. Mm -hmm. And if they do not need to be compliant, we'll feel cover. So what security framework would you suggest them to at least hey, start with this? Yeah, my first my first experience is really with NIST CSF, right? That's where I really Perfect. like cut my teeth. Um one dot one, obviously. Yeah. Uh they're iterated into two dot oh. But but as I've grown and I think um you know, I share, I've shared with you too. Like I, I work with uh, CompTIA and their working groups Thanks. trying to help MSPs, which service all of these communities. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's see, the CIS controls are just so targeted. They actually speak to technical people way more, not perfectly, but yeah. way more than this CSF does. Um, and I think I think the CIS controls are really like if you go look at what IG one right implementation group one of CIS. 18 it, it really does nail down if you get these things good your risk is severely reduced and that's that's where i would say absolutely go read that learn it find a non find myself and, and yeah. ask questions but but that's that's where i'd say the most um so yeah so are. what you're saying yeah for anybody who wanted to start at least to start with csf no question about it just go and get started, review it, understand it, and to your point, to it, take it to the next level. Like CIS, they literally has their controls available for each and every club. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I wouldn't even say CIS is next level, right? I just started with CIS, uh, okay. with CSF. I, I would do CIS at this point. First, it, okay. is, it is a better framework to okay. tangibly grab and do, right? You don't okay. have to kind of like run risk committees, right? <laughs> they get a lot more targeted to to make sure you kind of you do things that make a difference and prevent breaches very directly. I think you, it's it's a little bit of a top down versus bottom up approach to how it, how I would go about cybersecurity, but I really like CIS. But you tapped into something else, Anon, which is like, don't be scared of starting. I think yeah. one of the biggest things I see is that people kind of try to understand everything. Yeah. And forget to make forward progress. So we could talk about that in personal life, but we yeah. can also talk about that from cybersecurity point of view, right? CIS right. is organized one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, yeah. seven, eight. Do one. Yeah. Right. Don't yeah. try and figure out eighteen. Yes. And then go back to one. Just yeah. start doing one. Yeah. Or else yeah. you're gonna. It's not gonna make sense. Yeah, and 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 again, whatever approach they want to take it, like as you mentioned, and specifically for CIS, what thing I like about it, they have it like especially for cloud security for every cloud provider, CIS benchmark for AWS, CIS benchmark for Azure and GCP. Yeah, and so CIS is extended out into lots of different businesses to allow you, they've kind of pre-created all of these gold images, right? Yeah. For you to run that meet these requirements. And, well, and yes. very helpful uh, to kind of, to target in on what you need. And because right. again, they're actually working on the you know the unix instance the windows instance whatever yes. it is that's really helpful that gives yeah. you you know it saves you months of work sometimes right so and i also wanted to add just like at the same time one of the importance what i see for the css security framework is um 
technical control CIS, but once they also need to understand where these requirements are coming from. So CSF is very high level. It's like a policy level. Yeah. Hey, you have to have a strong authentication, but how would you achieve it? This is where you go to CIS control yeah. level. Hey, you have to have an MFA or app or authenticator, right? But that's been my challenge, right? Okay. And so when you talk to a small business and you know an auditor might come in and ask for your policies, right? What's more important for them to have a policy or for them to be doing it? Of course, doing it. Absolutely. This is where right. how they're going to reduce the risk, right? I'm not saying. So, so what you're saying, see, start with CIS, get it done, and then later worry about CSF. Kind of, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I think, you know, CIS does kind of talk to policies. It doesn't harp on them. It doesn't make them part of the requirement in, in, in a lot right. of the safeguards they talk right. about. But yes, and I think obviously an organization needs policies, right. but more importantly, I think, yeah. and again, I might go back to, because I, I, I do like create policies, institute yes. policies, right? Like there's a, there's a beauty to doing it that right. way, I think governance wise and organizationally, right. like th that makes a lot of sense to me. So, but yes. you can get stuck in, you can get stuck there and kind of make policies and nothing can actually get put into place. That's, I get that's, your point. A, that's a check. Yeah. Now you get, get your point. This is a perfect um, recipe for SMBs, small businesses right. uh, versus large enterprise. And it's a famous saying, if you get your security done right, you get compliance and audited much easier. You know, you're not the other yeah. way around because you can be compliant, but at the same time, you're not secure. You're not reducing. Yeah. Risk. I, that's I, I, always, I always say like chase compliance. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a necessity in our world, but yeah. focus on getting secure because right. that's what that'll offset any compliance program yeah. is, is an incident, right? Like it's yeah. going to, it's not, no one's going to be happy when that happens. So absolutely right. focus on security, not compliance, but yeah. you know, understand no. the challenge. Yeah, so 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 to summarize, that's the takeaway. If those who are into SMBs and uh, they really wanted to have security uh, controls implemented, CIS control, make sure you get the, the, these things delivered and configured by your IT or security uh, uh, staff, and just focus on that. And that can be done at a low budget. You don't really have to do it. As he and I was talking about compliance and all that, that could be like totally a different thing. But if you just focus on those, get this thing done, you're pretty much good enough to have a control and secure environment. And one thing I also wanted to make sure those um, who may not know, but it's a common word like um, MSP, managed service provider, mm -hmm. basically managed or MSSP, managed security service provider, like where the magic work and these guys basically outsource this thing and do the job for you. So again, this is another way where you don't have the staff and you need partial bring on people. There's so many of them available, but Matt, since is, I know him, is an expert here. Uh, he's been doing it. So, in, so that's another thing. You may want to leverage MSSP maybe in your estate or which, wherever your business is. So that's another thing. Yeah, a lot of a lot of these safeguards, controls, however you want to phrase them, depending on your framework, right? Like they they do tap into needing event log management, for instance, right? And, and that is, a, you know, those are well and good, but responding to alerts that come out of them, you know, these oh, yes. are, this is expertise that you're going to want to likely outsource in the SMB sector. Um, right. And yeah, that's, that's, that's where a lot yeah, of these and that's a in. whole different topic like seam and sort and login monitoring pretty much we spent two hours it won't be enough the red team and blue team and we go and on but only one thing i'll tell for businesses and decision maker information security leaders um yeah once you decide to choose always you want to look at what experience because these guys do it every day so this is the value there yeah, and it's it's you know there are some things I see, and the reason I harp on frameworks, right, is because mm -hmm. it gives you a the toolkit, it gives you the framework to succeed. A lot of people kind of look at the product marketplace and go, oh, this vendor's doing this, okay, that would help. Let's do this, and it's not wrong, but I don't know that it's a good kind of good Fit. practice, right? Like you, you've got to. You got to make sure you build your foundation right. before you go and chase the shiny tool. And they're great. Right. Don't get me wrong. There are certain things that I would, you know, I think the world would be better off if browsers didn't have risks around links, you know, and, and controlling that is a great thing to have. But 
it's not the only thing you've got to have. Yeah. So the framework helps you show what you're doing to leadership and justify the program that you're running to to secure the business. No, that's perfect. That that absolutely makes sense. And I hope if the people are watching it makes sense. You know that the the base, the foundation, really matters. Not just the tool and all that. That that's that's perfect. So um, let's talk about again in the industry. In your experience, most sort of a risk or third, what, what do you see? What's your experience? Say, you know, I've been to this five, seven customer, and every time I see, they all lacking the same thing. Is there something? Oh God, that's a tough question. Um, are they all lacking the same thing? I think. Enough to, you know, the phrase kind of, you know, enough to be dangerous, right? Okay. That that comes to mind where some people think the, if people think they're covered, but okay. they're not, I think that's holistically, that's the biggest, the biggest problem I see, right? Oh, I've got security. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like explain to me more. And then you start to see kind of, you can, you can open that up. But if there's one thing I had to pick. Uh, one, two, three at most. I give so, option three options. The, 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 I'd say the biggest one is software inventory. I think okay. it, it comes it comes in in CIS Control two dot one. Okay. Uh, I I think it just becomes people. You know, we always say right it, it, in CIS in, in CIS it's controls one and two and three. Mm -hmm. It's is all inv they're all inventory controls. Right. Know what you have. Okay. It goes into my point earlier, maybe about the tools, right? People chase a tool but forget to do the basics, mm. you know, onboarding and offboarding users and I... hardware inventory, software inventory, application mm. inventory. You know, these things are really, really and important. Basics. And these are the basic. You need to know what you have in your environment. You need to How know what you have, right? How do you do a patch management program? If... How do you go and patch software if you don't know what you have? Yeah. And that will go to the vulnerability management program. This is where IR and tabletop comes in. So again, right. I like your approach that the, the base is... It's a, the vulnerability management is exactly where I've run into issues, right? Because people kind of go fix vulnerability management. And all you do is you find a bunch of software that you didn't know you had yeah, that's vulnerable. You. And so it's it's you, you've got to fix that you got to know what you have first and it yeah. sounds really basic and some people get confused with like oh i know what i have i have you know i have 200 windows 10 machines and yeah. 300 windows 11 machines you're like uh -huh. what software is installed on them oh i mean yeah, yeah lots like okay well let's figure that out right yeah. it's tedious boring work no one likes it but i think that's the if i had to pick one thing yeah i get it it's that because you can fix a lot of vulnerabilities by just knowing what you have and going, yeah. oh, as soon as you yeah. see it, you're like, oh, well, that all needs to be on the same version or this needs right. to be updated, right? Those, those are things that just take time. Yeah, perfect. No, so before I changed to a different topic and I was on a uh, social event for security last week and somebody, I heard in the audience, they still run Windows 7. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> I mean, so, I, I, pres I presume they've got it locked down. They've got it firewalled. They've got it, you know, VLAN yeah, sure. off, right? So, so yeah, I mean, they may have legitimate, but uh, <laughs> yeah, things do exist. So now let's move on to um, about your engagement with uh, ISC Squire being the board on the board. I and ISC two, we're called now. ISC two. ISC yeah. two, yeah, it's got completely rebranded re this summer. ISC two now, not ISC squared. Okay, my bad. Yeah, there is, there's no more superscript two that screwed up a lot of uh, typographers and searches. So yeah, what do you do? And, I mean, as a board, like the people who are in New Jersey wanted to be interesting to know, wanted to join, like like what value does it bring? You know, I, I'm one of the wit witness here. But yeah, I, I wanted to know more. I mean, you've been I, doing it. Just I, I have. It's it's a good two two years. I think coming two and a half. Uh, mm -hmm. Where I've been I've been there. I think a, a year and a half on the board. And mm -hmm. look, we're a working board. It's not some, um, you know, we don't sit in some special room and make decisions or anything right. like that. It's a working chapter that brings uh, cybersecurity folks together and educates them. Right. Plain and simple, you know. And and we it's it's a very volunteer driven. Um, our right. chapter is by far the the most successful inside of uh the US and you know 
I think I think the world would be a good statement too. We're very much driving a lot of the change inside of ISC two as an organization. Nice. Um, and so yeah, there's what what do I do? I run the mentorship program. I make sure people connect with others to right. learn not just cybersecurity, but you know, how to do a job interview, mm-hmm. uh, how how to approach and work inside of an organization, right. how to career shift. So there's Perfect. there's lots of things that come into come into yeah. the space. And how about your engagement with the CompTIA? Pretty much the same, or is there any difference? No, CompTIA. I'm working on uh, really, you know, I, I I work with them from their executive steering uh, kind of positions. So I I do help them overall, and there are groups that get together uh, around those things about what CompTIA can and can't do, and all those kinds mm-hmm. of things. But more specifically, I've helped grow out the the MSP certification they have called Trustmark. Uh, what okay. they are, what they are, what they are doing is building a framework, mostly based on CIS, but with other additional controls, uh, safeguards depending on your uh, preference. Uh, they, so I, I've helped build that out with a good group of eight, eight or nine others uh, mm-hmm. around what an MSP should have in place in order to be certified as a Trustmark certified vendor. Okay. That, that that is an industry goal to provide confidence to the marketplace around what right. an MSP what an MSP has and whether or not they will be sufficient for business needs. Kind of right. you know, there are other other industries, other professions that have yeah. you know, and this, this is a, again industry run, um, but you know, and I can't speak to other industries, I don't want to yeah. speak to them, but you know, they're lawyers, accountants have certifications yeah. that are governed by uh, peer groups around what's valid and what they should and shouldn't be able to do. So I work on that. Nice. Interesting. Yeah, I would love to know more from especially the MSP and vendor side. Um, yeah, vendors are getting very involved. And so there's there's a lot to, you know, when, when you go and approach a, a, either a service provider or, or a vendor, right, a SaaS vendor. Yes. What do you have in place to make sure you're not going Tell to leak audit. my data? What are you doing, any, right? Any of those, and I've seen those audit reports, man. Yeah. yeah. So there's a and much so needed in, space to it have. It is. And so instead of, you know, security practitioners, perhaps in the in the past, right, what we would end up doing there is sit there with like these huge vendor due diligence, you know, like. 400 kind questions, of, 500 yeah, questions. Yeah, asking them. And, and no one has time for that. No. That's not productive. So, yes, yes, yes. And, right. And so, you know, trying to mature out that market and make it more, um, yeah, you know, more useful for for the ecosphere because I can be successful, but ultimately, like cybersecurity needs to be successful across the country, or else we have a big problem. Yeah. Um, and so we we need these things to be put in place before things like CMMC will just get enforced and 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 by the government, and say, like here's what you're gonna do, or else you can't. X, Y, Z. I don't know, but that's yeah. what we're trying to work on to prevent. Uh, we want to we want to self regulate. Right. Good. Good. Um, and before we wrap up, any um, uh, you mentioned like um, th- I have audience who are courage seeker or transitioning to cybersecurity. I get a lot. Mm. What's your recommendation for someone? Uh, because most of the time I get the questions about they have bachelor's and master's, they do have boot camp, but they lack experience, and that's the challenge they have getting a job. Yeah, it's a tough one, um, you know, because, you know, we say we need people in the industry, yeah. but then we, we, it's, it's <laughs> hard to – Yeah, yeah and, and I, I suffer, right, because I, I – with – I think a technical background helps a lot. And so I think you see a lot of people going into security from a technical point of view, from an IT point of view. Um, I think they're a natural pairing. That said, there are areas where, you know, I'd say on the more education and the policy sides, like I think there's room there. But if you want to get experience, volunteer, get into like, you know, sales and marketing, I think are spaces where, People can go work inside cybersecurity space and not need to be practitioners. And so I think those are good places to go um, Go start that journey. Just to have the and exposed to the environment. Yeah, like you're just going to learn words, right? You're going you're gonna to be at a company that speaks this language. And so, uh-huh. you know, those things are all really valuable. You know, I'm not saying it's simple and I, I, it's yeah. hard to, you know, but, but those – 
those that's what comes to mind when you ask like yeah. what's what's advice around this yeah and then of course and we're about to wrap up now and of course those who are based on new jersey he's running a mentorship program volunteers are always welcome so if if you're new jersey you wanted to get into it then you should not wait yeah i I, isc2 chapter nj.org so it's isc2 chapter nj.org that's where the website is and there's more there um and you know feel free to reach out to me on linkedin i'm pretty easy to find although there are there some other, other matt right. langs in there but my yeah. picture's there so you can see me yeah so again uh those um who are watching provide me with your feedback as i said matt is from the industry we can go on and on on application security, one of the management program, IR, tabletop. I mean, there's a lot of room and to for a career perspective, a lot of growth there. And also for the businesses, like we were talking about just, we, just the tip of the iceberg, we were talking about uh, MSP and how like seam and solar and 27 monitoring is like a whole different area. So all those topics can be discussed and I would like to know uh, feedback from you and um, again be a part of your local community local chapter networking is one of the best key skills you want to have that's the reason he and I are on the call um, and again Matt I really appreciate it Thanks I for appreciate your time. it from your end thank you so much and, for the time um, and hopefully we'll touch more uh, topics in the near future absolutely look forward to it yeah thank you bye bye